provide the right intensity. It is sure to elevate your heart rate substantially and in doing so, improve your VO2 max, which is correlated with all sorts of important metrics related to health span, performance, and lifespan. Everyone, including you, stand a chance of getting a cardiovascular attack at any moment from now. The good thing is we have 100% control over whether we will ever experience a cardiac issue or whether we live a healthy, peaceful, long life, just as most of us have planned to do for the rest of our lives. But the problem is a lot of people don't know how to keep their heart strong and healthy. So in this video, I'm going to share with you one of the best workout routines that's guaranteed to instantly improve your cardiovascular health, ensuring you live a healthy, longer life. Now, we can't talk about cardiovascular health without talking about one of the most crucial indicators of cardiovascular health, which is our VO2 max. Imagine your body as a car engine and oxygen as the fuel it needs to run efficiently. VO2 max is like the maximum fuel capacity of your engine. So let's say you're running on a treadmill. As you increase your speed and intensity, your body demands more oxygen to keep up with the energy demands of your muscles. Your VO2 max represents the maximum amount of oxygen your body can take in, transport, and use during this intense exercise. Think of it this way. If your VO2 max is high, it's like having a bigger fuel tank in your car. You can sustain high intensity exercise for longer periods because your body can deliver more oxygen to your muscles, allowing you to keep going without running out of fuel or oxygen as quickly. On the other hand, if your VO2 max is low, it's like having a smaller fuel tank. You might feel out of breath and fatigued more quickly during intense exercise because your body can't deliver oxygen to your muscles as efficiently, limiting your endurance. So VO2 max is essentially a measure of how well your body can utilize oxygen during an intense activity like running, cycling, hiking, or any high intensity interval training. In 2009, a team of researchers wanted to understand how our VO2 max is related to the risk of us dying from heart-related problems. They analyzed 33 different studies that involved over 100,000 people. Their main goal was to see if there was a connection between how fit someone is and how likely they are to have heart problems that could lead to death. What they found was amazing. They found that participants with higher levels of VO2 max had a significantly lower risk of cardiovascular disease mortality and participants who were recorded to have lower levels of VO2 max sadly risked having cardiovascular diseases like heart failure, a situation in which your heart loses its ability to pump blood to the various parts of your body. This can lead to you experiencing symptoms like a quick short of breath, easy fatigue, and even swelling of your legs. Low VO2 max also increases your chances of getting a stroke. And as most of you are probably aware, a stroke is a very dangerous disease. Imagine a situation where your brain, which is one of the most crucial parts of your body, and your life in general is not getting enough blood what do you think will happen? There are tens of other severe heart-related diseases that are caused by having low VO2 max. Now, the big question becomes, how do you instantly improve your VO2 max? Because you can. One of the fastest and most effective ways to improve VO2 max is through high-intensity interval training. First of all, if you provide the right intensity, it is sure to elevate your heart rate substantially, and in doing so, improve your VO2 max which is correlated with all sorts of important metrics related to health span, performance, and lifespan. Now, in a high intensity interval training, you constantly shift between short bursts of intense exercise and periods of rest. Let's go back to the analogy of treating your body as a car. So think of high intensity interval training as driving your car on a road with hills and flat stretches. During the uphill sections, you push hard on the gas pedal, which is the high intensity while during the downhill or flat sections, you ease off on the gas pedal, which is your period of rest. Now remember our car engine with its fuel tank representing VO2 max. During the intense bursts of exercise, your body demands a lot of oxygen to fuel your muscles, similar to pushing hard on the gas pedal to climb a steep hill. This pushes your cardiovascular system to work harder to deliver oxygen to your muscles, which helps improve your VO2 max over time and the periods of rest allows your body to partially recover before the next intense interval. This is like driving on a flat road, giving your engine, which again is your body a chance to catch its breath and recharge before the next uphill climb. Now, where do you start? You start by one, deciding what types of exercise you want to include in your training. For some of you, it will be a stationary bike. For others of you, it will be a road bike. For others of you, it will be running, and for others of you, it will be rowing. The exact form of exercise is not important. So you have to start with exercises that feel manageable, yet challenging enough to push yourself a bit. 
As you get stronger and more comfortable, you can gradually increase the intensity and variety of your workouts. In case you don't know which exercise to choose from, I've pinned a number of them in the comment section. Now that you have selected your choice of exercise, let's decide the duration and intensity of training. There's no specific duration or intensity, only a guideline. This is obviously because people have different fitness levels. So the work intervals typically range from 20 seconds to two minutes, depending on the intensity of the exercise. And again, the individual fitness levels. Shorter intervals, like 20 to 30 seconds, are usually performed at maximum effort, while longer intervals like one to two minutes may allow for slightly lower intensity, but still challenging effort. The golden rule for the rest intervals is that it should be long enough to allow for partial recovery, but short enough to maintain the overall intensity of your workout. Rest intervals often range from one to two times the duration of the work intervals, or it can be half your work intervals depending on your fitness level. Now, if you're wondering about the total duration of the entire workout, guess what? It's also not fixed. It ranges anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, including the warm up. Now, there's a link to a free resource in the comments section that will guide you in choosing the best interval time for you. One thing that most people forget to do before they start their workout is a warm up. So, here's an example. So, you're going to do three to five minutes of jogging or jumping jacks or skipping rope, something to get your core body temperature up so that you're prepared to do the high intensity work. And then Friday is the day that I do a short workout, usually only about three minutes of warm up and about 12 minutes of training. And the goal is to get my heart rate as high as I possibly can. I learned this from Andy Galpin. Just increasing VO2 max, getting those really fast twitch muscle fibers. My favorite way to do this is I'll get on the assault bike, which are the ones with the handles, with the fan, which is mm -hmm. not designed to keep you cool. It's designed to create resistance, folks. And do 20 second on sprint, 10 second rest, 20 second on 10 second oh. type thing for six to eight rounds. And then what I like to do is take a band and tie it to something like a chin up bar or something, and I'll squat down and jump. And I'll do as high jumping as I possibly can, but I actually control the eccentric. <laughs>